Gospels and people Saves to the Lord In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the same Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For, for God, God to beseech you, O Lord, and grace into our hearts, that we turn the incarnation, was men known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, King of kings and Lord of lords, we, your children, come before you this evening to learn more Catholic faith. As we begin this online catechism, live online catechism, which is beginning today for the very first time, we ask you, dear Lord, that you be with us that you help us to understand our faith. Because we realize that if we do not understand our faith, it will be difficult for us to pray well. Father, we invite the Holy Spirit that has come down into our world to be present with us online, even as we study our catechism. We ask you, dear Lord, that you bless all those who will participate in this program Keep far away from us any evil person with any evil intention trying to disrupt this program. Father, may they never succeed. Amen. Help us as we partake of this live online program to grow deeper in our knowledge and understanding of the faith. Amen. And give us the grace to be able to answer whatever questions that will come to us. Help us, Lord God, inspire us, give us the right words to use to answer whatever questions that will be drawn to us. At the end of this program, Lord God, we beg you that your children who partake of this program may understand the faith better and that they will be better Christians, better Catholics, and able to serve you with all their heart, with all their mind, and with all their soul. May your name be glorified in our lives. Even as we study the Catechism, we study it in a mode of prayer. We bring our intentions, Lord God, before you. And we beg you in your goodness and mercy that you bless us. Lord, provide for us. As we partake of this Catechism, Lord God, May we be blessed. Mm -hmm. May we grow deeper in the faith. Mm -hmm. May we grow deeper in holiness. May we grow deeper in virtue. Mm -hmm. Lord God, bless everything that we place our hands upon. Provide for us, Lord God. Ever since I was young and now I am old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. Lord, may we never be forsaken. Lord, as we study how to become righteous, how to serve you, Lord, we will never beg for bread. We will never lack our basic needs and necessities. Lord, answer our prayers as we pray today for all the other intentions we have been bringing before you. As we pray for our word, Lord God, bless us. 
answer our prayers, grant us testimonies. May your name forever be glorified in our lives, both now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the, and of the Son, Son, and of and the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, I welcome you to uh, something I've been thinking of for quite some time now, uh, online catechism classes. Uh, the idea is to get as interactive as possible. So if you are partaking of this online catechism class for the first time, I encourage you to share it with your friends and encourage others to also partake. It will be by the grace of God, 6 p.m. every day, 6 p.m. every day, we shall spend 30 minutes or perhaps more than 30 minutes just to study the catechism. And this is providing an opportunity to many Catholics who have never had the opportunity of um, studying catechism before. Perhaps maybe they find it difficult to attend catechism class or they feel that catechism class is only for children. This is an opportunity for you in the comfort of your home, in your place of work, wherever you may be, as long as you have access to your phone, you can join in this catechism class. You can study the Word of God. Even for those of us who have been uh, attend who have attended catechism class before, this is also an opportunity for you to know your faith, to grow in your faith, to understand your faith better. We will take note of everyone who is partaking of this catechism class as we will take your questions. Whatever questions will come, we will immediately respond to it. So my dear friends in Christ, for today, we shall be looking at a general outline of our catechism, the catechism of the Catholic Church. And we shall be making use of this book, the, the big one, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the revised edition published by uh, the Paulines. And I think this edition was uh, it's copyright 1992, the Library of the Vatican. So we are looking at the contents for today. We are just looking at the structure, the introduction, what we shall expect. At the beginning, we look at the life of man. Why are we here on earth? Why do we exist? The Catechism will tell us that we are alive to know God and to love God. We are alive to know God and to love God. We need to know God with our minds and we need to love God with our hearts. That is the purpose of our existence. Then we shall be looking at handing on the faith, the catechesis. Catechism is all about the faith. When we say we believe in God, what do we really mean? I have come to discover that when we Christians, when we say I believe in God, our understanding of God is often different from other people's understanding of God. And sometimes there is need to really clarify when you say you believe in God, who is God to you? And how does God interact in your life? Because your understanding of God determines how you live your Christian life. If you don't really know God, how then can you serve Him? Catechism is all about knowing God. Catechism is somewhat an intellectual process in that you are using your brain, you are discovering more, reading from the Catechism, reading from the Bible. But it is most important and more importantly a spiritual exercise. Because here we are not studying uh, medicine, we are not studying physics, we are studying our faith. What is it that makes us to wake up in the morning, fold our hands and begin to pray? Why do we go to the church? What do we do when we say we are praying? What is our understanding of prayer? Is prayer magic? Does prayer actually work? Is it worth the why saying a prayer? How do you pray? 
You see, even in the life of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ taught his disciples how to pray. So Jesus Christ actually did catechism. Jesus Christ is the first catechism teacher. When he gathered his disciples and he told them that when you are praying, do not pray in public. Pray in secret, that your father who sees in secret will hear you in secret. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was catechizing them, teaching them about the faith. And we look at the aim and intended readership of the catechism. We also look at the structure of this catechism, practical directions on using this catechism, necessary adaptations. Then we shall look at part one. We go to part one. Part one is about the faith. The faith. I believe in God. I believe. We have a creed which we often recite at every mass. Sometimes we sing it. And that creed is a summary of everything that we claim to believe. Every Christian and every Catholic should be able to understand that creed. Because many times we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We just recite it without deeply reflecting on those words. That is what we shall do in this catechism. Understanding the faith. Understanding what we believe. And then we shall move on after understanding the, the, the creed. You see, the creed is, is just is so is such an important part of our catechism. In fact, everything that is we are going to be studying in this catechism is all about that creed. I believe in God. After which, we look at the next part, which is the celebration of the Christian mystery. There, we shall look at the sacramental economy, the different sacraments of the Catholic Church. We look at the Paschal mystery in the age of the church. Basically, we are saying the liturgy or the sacrament of the Eucharist, the baptism, the sacrament of the um, sacrament of healing. You know, there are the, the sacraments of the church. There are seven sacraments of the church. And these seven sacraments are categorized into two. There are, there are the sacraments of Christian initiation, and then there is the sacrament of healing. Sacraments of Christian initiation, those sacraments bring us into the fold. And then we have sacraments of healing. Under the sacraments of Christian initiation, then we, we have the sacrament of baptism, the sacrament of confirmation and the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Three sacraments of Christian initiation. And then the second aspect is the sacrament of healing. So the sacraments of Christian initiation bring us into the fold. The sacraments of healing help us when we are sick, when we are falling as a result of our sins, and when we are in need of God's help. That is why we, we, here we find the sacrament of penance or confession. We shall examine the sacrament of penance. What do we mean? What do we do when we go to the priest for confession? Then we look at the sacrament of anointing of the sick. Those are the two sacraments of healing. Sacraments of penance, sacraments of anointing of the sick. Then the third category, chapter 3. The sacraments are the service of the Christian. Uh, the sacraments are the service of communion. The sacraments are the service of communion. Where we find two other sacraments. The sacrament of holy order is the sacrament of service. Also, sacrament of matrimony is also a sacrament of service. We shall look at marriage. What do we understand by marriage? When you say we are getting married. And what are the laws of marriage in the church? After which, so you see, the first part is to understand the faith. The second part is to understand the sacraments. Now the third part is to understand our life in Christ. Here, we shall be looking at man, the image of God, the vocation to the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5. Our freedom, freedom and responsibility. Morality of human acts. What makes an action right or wrong? 
the morality of the passions, moral conscience. What is conscience? How do we judge? How are we able to know, oh, I'm doing the right thing now? No, this is the wrong thing. We look at the virtues, then we look at sin. What is sin? What is your understanding of sin? What makes an, uh, something sin, sinful or not? Then we look at the human community, after which we shall look at another session, which is the Ten Commandments. Each of these Ten Commandments, we will analyze them one by one. The first commandment, what is the meaning of the first commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Second commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Third commandment, the, the, all the other commandments, see? sorry, they are, the, the Ten Commandments are grouped into two. Number one, the commandments concerning God. There you find the first commandment, the second commandment, and then the third commandment. And then the second category of the commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there we find the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and the tenth commandment. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Now we look at Christian prayer. What, what is Christian prayer? Why do we pray the way we pray? Why is Catholic way of prayer? Why is it different from other congregations way of prayer? Why? What is our understanding of prayer? What, what do we do when we say we are praying? These are what we shall be considering in part four, which is prayer. Under this aspect of prayer, we look at prayer in the Christian life, look at the tradition of prayer, we look at the life of prayer, different types of prayer, such as vocal prayer, meditation, contemplative prayer, the battle of prayer, objections to prayer, humble vigilance of heart. Then we look at the Lord's prayer, which is the Our Father. So basically, that is just, uh, I just summarized everything that we shall be studying in the course of this catechism. It's going to be a long journey. It's not going to be, we're not going to start and finish it today. Because the real purpose of this catechism series is that it will be recorded and available online such that you can even download it and in your own convenience at any time you can go through the catechism and i'm hoping that one day this recording or this series will be given to people and they can use it and study the faith at home children too can study so i will try as much as i can to make it very simple to use very simple language because here i'm i know i am addressing not only adults but most especially children there's so much there's so much content online today so much you see music you see entertainment you see all kinds of things online and our children tend to stumble on these things which are not good for their moral consumption you'll be so shocked that even your six-year-old child already knows the latest release of the songs that was just produced by a popular musician just yesterday but when you ask that child do you believe in god the child will be looking at you and be moping so you can see if this child knows the latest song that has just been released how come he doesn't know so much about his faith how come he goes to church and he sees you praying he doesn't know why you are praying he doesn't know who you are praying to he considers prayer to be a waste of time he considers prayer as something that he's been forced to do like many parents we force our children to pray 
So our children already have a wrong notion of prayer. They see prayer as something that we, they are being forced to do, not something that they need, they need to do. And so whenever you tell your child, oh, it is time for prayer, you see their, their, their mood changes, that like they are angry, that like they are not happy. Why should you not be happy? You are going to talk to your God. So you see, they need, if, they, if they understand the faith, if we, if we understand our faith, if we understand what we do, I tell you, we will be better Christians. And it is for this reason that I'm using this time, I'm using this, uh, this space, or using this possibility of social media, live communication, dedicating it totally to the catechism. So I think it is uh, almost 30 minutes already. I intend to uh, stick to time, just 30 minutes. I think we have like uh, six minutes more. So uh, we close to the closing time. Any questions? Okay, so there are no questions for today. I would um, just make one or two points from the very beginning of this catechism. The life of man to know and love God. In John chapter 17 verse 3, we hear Jesus say, Father, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17 verse 3. This statement of Jesus was made in one of his priestly prayers towards the end of his public ministry, where he knew that the end was approaching. Jesus Christ said, This is eternal life. That they know you, God, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. To know God and to know Jesus, to recognize that Jesus is Lord, is eternal life. It is everything to know God and to know Jesus. So the question is always, do you know God? St. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 to 4 says, God our Savior desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So the whole essence of this catechism is all about knowing the truth. There are so many lies out there. There are so many lies in the world. Lies of the evil one telling you, oh, your life is meant to be enjoyed. The body is meant for pleasure. And we see all this in our music, in our movies, and we see how we are so easily made to believe these lies. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That is why I encourage you to be part of this catechism class, to be part of this catechism, this online catechism, to know the truth. Because when you know the truth, then you can easily identify a lie. On Instagram, you see different kinds of challenge. This challenge, mannequin challenge, uh, the A challenge or B challenge. And we see people will just be flocking into this, flocking into this. They don't even understand what they are doing. We, children of God, we are the one who should be giving the word challenge. Not the world giving us challenge. Another Bible quotation, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. Uh, it reads, There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name among, under heaven given among men by which we shall be saved. This is salvation, to know God, to follow God. Nothing can bring us salvation. No money can bring us salvation. No human being can bring us salvation. No Donald Trump can bring us salvation. No Buhari can give us salvation. Now it is almost time for election in our state. And people are saying, oh, this person, you see, you see politicians, 
making all kinds of promises. I will do this, I will do this. It's a lie. There is no salvation in man. There is no salvation in man. Only in God can we find salvation. There is no other name by which we can be saved other than the name of Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. God our Father, we thank you for the privilege of starting today's baptism. We ask you, dear Lord, that as we have introduced this baptism, that by your grace and by your power, we will continue this program. We will continue to learn more about the faith and we will be drawn to follow you, to serve you with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.